734, it is the morning after primary day. PIX11 is your election headquarters. Here with a recap of the closely watched governor's race. Governor Kathy Hochul, her running mate Antonio Delgado, locking in their victories early last night. Now, the Republican race took a little longer to call, but frontrunner Lee Zeldin beat out his challengers. And joining us this morning is political analyst Morgan Peckma with more on what we can expect from both sides leading up to November. Morgan, good morning. Good morning, Craig. All right, so Governor Kathy Hochul kept a solid lead throughout her campaign. So her primary victory didn't really come as a surprise, but does she have enough support from the conservative Democrats to pull off a win against Republican Lee Zeldin in November? That's the question. Oh, it's very hard for a Republican to win statewide because Democrats have such a overwhelming registration advantage. And um, this was an impressive win for Kathy Hochul. People thought this was going to be a tight primary for her, but she really romped. And uh, it seems that she is on, on the path to win a full term as governor. I mean, they, the analysts were saying all along that this was really hers to lose. She wrapped up the big uh, endorsement. She also had a big war chest going in her favor. Those are two things that are super important. But looking at the Republican side, we caught up with former Congressman Peter King last night, who says that Republicans stand a good chance of winning in November, which, of course, flies in the face of what you just said about Republicans are at. Let's listen into what he had to say. I think we have an excellent chance this year. I think Lee Zeldin will be a great candidate. But now this, this year is, should be the Republican year. It's up to us to make it work, but it's all there. People are unhappy. Governor Hochul has really not established herself at all. And whether it's crime or inflation or whatever, people right now want to vote Republican. It's up to us to, again, seal the deal between now and November. This is a lot of good issues that people have been talking about a lot. But is it enough to overdo, you know, what you're talking about, the fact that we, we've just got a majority Democrat state here? Well, certainly this is going to be a good Republican cycle. Uh, you know, there, there are these problems that uh, Congressman King pointed to. Uh, but at the same time, we haven't had a Republican win statewide in over a decade. And um, especially with voters, uh, downstate voters and Democrats across the state, uh, the state motivated by the Roe v. Wade decision, there is going to be a lot of energy around this election. And uh, unless something really disastrous happens for Kathy Hochul between now and November, she is just well positioned just simply by being a Democrat to win the statewide election. All right. Well, Lieutenant Governor Antonio Delgado pulled off a decisive win despite his late entry into the race. Um, what, what do you think he's going to have to do to maintain his momentum at the polls, or does he really have to work that hard? Um, you know, uh, certainly this was the big test for the lieutenant governor, whether he could hold on in the primary. He only became the lieutenant governor just uh, recently and, and had low name recognition. Uh, but on the on the statewide race, um, being part of the ticket, the Democratic ticket, he is also well positioned to win statewide. You know, we've got so many issues that are facing New York when we talk about crime, when we talk about gun violence, when we talk about taxes, Roe v. Wade. Voter turnout still super low. We saw that the absentee balloting was about 2 percent, the Board of Elections said, going into this. How is this all going to play into the landscape of what happens in November? And can they keep that Roe v. Wade momentum going that long? Uh, well, of course, it's it's very disappointing, the voter turnout. Uh, there was a great hope that uh, creating early voting would enable more New Yorkers to vote. Um, but clearly, there is just widespread disillusionment among the electorate. Uh, there weren't a lot of competitive races that drew people to the polls. And also splitting the two primary days so that we'll have another primary day in August for a congressional state Senate races, I'm sure also depressed turnout. Um, you know, I, I don't think we're going to see high turnout in November. Uh, but when you look at just the overwhelming registration advantage for Democrats, it's, it's a very, it's an almost insurmountable hurdle for all but the most exceptional Republican candidate. All right. Well, Morgan, where do the Democrats and Republicans go from here? I mean, what kind of strategy is going to really be needed by each party to pull off some kind of victory in November? Well, it's going to be hard for Lee Zeldin. Um, in Congress, uh, Contrary to his state Senate record, he really tacked to uh, to the right, to the to the Trump MAGA world, and for him to be able to pivot back now towards the center, as Republicans traditionally do in the general election, uh, that's going to be hard for him to to carve out that space. 
You know what? We've got five months to go. We all know so much can happen in that five months' time, but we're going to continue to stay on top of it. Morgan Peckham, thanks so much for joining us this morning Thank and you. breaking down all these issues on the gubernatorial end. Thanks.